miracles exist? Are healing miracles real? Is there life after death? Can people get supernatural help from another dimension? Has the future been written in advance? Sid Roth has spent 25 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid on this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. Heaven, hell, these are natural things. They're not fantasy, but you decide for yourself. I want to introduce you to my guest, Mary Catherine Baxter, because in April of 1976, at 2 a.m. in the morning, you had a surprise guest. Tell me what happened. Well, I was in prayer, and uh, Jesus Christ appeared to me in a human form. There was a brilliant light came into my bedroom, and when the light cleared up, there stood Jesus. And he said, I've appeared to you for a reason and a purpose, that I may take you on a journey and show you the depths, the degrees, the levels and torments of hell. He said, it's for the whole world, it's not for a handful of people. And he explained to me how ahead of me would be horrors and sorrows and grief, because he would actually talk to some of the dead in hell, and I would have to record it. Now, when you visited hell, was there a point where you experienced what people there are experiencing to a degree? Yes, I did. Tell me about that. Sid, I did that twice. It was like the 20th night into hell. I went to hell every night, three hours a night, for 30 nights. And 30 nights? You must have been wishing this thing was over. Oh, yes, yes. And Now, oh, now we can treat it lightly right now because it's okay. back in 1976. Yeah. However, you do, I've noticed that you really don't even like talking about it that much, do you? No. Uh -uh. Why? Because I rem it bothers me uh, because of people that go to hell. They're lost and there's no more hope for them. Okay, first of all, where is hell located? In the middle of the earth, and it's in the pl shape of a human body, and it's on its back. And there's different levels, different degrees, different fires of torment. Uh, how does someone enter hell? Through a gateway. Or there's gateways called tunnels. Like. They're kind of like tunnels or tornadoes, and they spin around and back again in the atmosphere. And they're hooked to the earth. And they call them tunnels, but Jesus calls them gateways to hell. And that's when they die and they rejected God. They actually descend down this gateway into hell. Okay, now back to that original question I okay. asked you about what it feels like to okay. be in hell as a person that uh, is separated from God. Well, it was on the twin, about the 20th night, and the Lord told me, he said, uh, you, um, you may not see me, but I'm here. He said, there's something you have to go through for this revelation because you've got to know that you know that you know that this is real like John the Revelator he said and when, when he said that he was gone I couldn't see him and an evil presence an evil demon they came over and they touched me and they said your Jesus has left you and uh, when they did it was like a million razor blades went through my body and I was in the spirit form but I had all my senses, you know, and my body was at home on the bed. And I understood everything. I, I understood uh, why people were in hell, the moans and the screams of the dead. And then another demon came up and they said, we're going to put you in this compartment. And Jesus has left you. And they were laughing and mocking. And I was put in an area where the fire was racing towards my feet in a jail cell. And Sid, it burned. I could actually feel it burning me. And I was in the spirit. And it was burning my legs, and it was burning up my legs. I was screaming and screaming. And I said, Jesus, where are you? And I began to quote the word of the Lord. And as I did that, the demons would scream, and they would back up. And I'd say, the blood of Jesus, I'm redeemed, I'm saved. What am I doing here? Because it was like I was a lost sinner. It really was. And then, Now, from what you've told me, uh, yeah. you were able to feel. Oh, pain. yeah. Oh, my goodness, what, yes. What were you able to smell? The smell of stent, of sewers, smell of burning, rotten flesh. The air was so thin you could hardly breathe. Uh, and the, the awful part is the cries of the dead. Uh, the moans and the groans of the regret because they missed Jesus. And demons remind them that they could have had Jesus. They could have been born again and been saved from eternity. 
damnation. Uh, could you tell me one person you spoke with there and what they said, or that Jesus spoke with and what they said? Jesus spoke to many, but the main one that really was coming to mind was a woman, okay? She used to be a minister of God's Word, okay, and her husband committed adultery. He, he fell from grace, and so he went to her and told him that uh, he had been tempted and did the sin, would she forgive him? And she told him no. And he went to the pastor and he asked the pastor. They all forgave him and prayed for him because he was tempted of the devil. And the woman got very angry and she said, here I am preaching God's word and uh, I'm so holy and he's so sinful. But what happened, she quit reading her Bible, she quit praying, and she eventually let Satan in her heart with hatred and malice. And she took a gun and she killed the other woman and she killed her husband mm. and she killed herself. She ended up in hell. And uh, the affair had ended a long time ago, but she had such bitterness said, that Jesus spoke to her. He said, you should have lived what you preached. You should have forgiven. You should have uh, understood. That's what Jesus told her. And he said, instead, you yielded to the devil and sin entered into your heart. Hatred and sin. That's what he told her. Let me ask you this. When he was escorting you through mm -hmm, hell, mm -hmm. did some of the people try to talk to him? Oh, yeah. And what, tell me some of that dialogue. Okay, many of them would. And they, would, they were in different nations, okay, different languages. But he understood all of them. And when people go to hell, see it, it, it's a whatever lifetime of sin they committed. If they were liars, they're put with liars. If they were so murdered. So there's like categories. Yeah, like in the Galatians, the book of Galatians, the 17 works of the flesh. If they were murderers, they're put with murderers. And as Christ would walk, they would reach their bony hands up because they were skeletons full of dead man's bones. They didn't have hair, flesh, blood, or organs. But they could talk, they could turn, and they would scream and they'd say, put the fires out. Don't let us burn anymore. And they would cry for repentance, some, but some would curse the Lord. Some would scream at him and say, why didn't my neighbor warn me? Why didn't they take me to church? And you would hear the cries of the multitude. Is there any reversal? I mean, would, uh, would someone that is committed to hell, can they ever get out of hell? Absolutely not. We'll be back in a moment. This is fascinating because when people die, they go to one of two places. They go to heaven or they go to hell. Mary Catherine Baxter went to both places. So you'll have a little preview of what to expect. Don't go away. We'll be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. 